Now, Lord, we thank you for this time. Father, I thank you that your love is so good, your mercy is so good, and endures forever, and great is your faithfulness. And Father, I thank you uh, for the uh, ones that are here today, Lord. I thank you for my family in Christ, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I thank you, Father God, that, that our hearts are softened and open to you. And Lord, I thank you that uh, <clears throat> this just isn't another time where we just, you know, come together and chalk one up for God on Sunday morning and all that good stuff, Lord. But no, this is a time where we learn, we grow, we get healed, we get restored, we get help, Father God, we gain wisdom and understanding and revelation, Lord. Let it be that way today, Lord. I ask you for your glory to come. I ask you for your glory to rest upon us today. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here. The Word says to desire the best gifts. We desire the gifts of the Spirit to flow. Whatever you want to do today, Lord, have your way today, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. You know, Coach, I've got a word for you. I heard the Lord say to me uh, this morning while uh, I was in during praise and worship. He said, tell Coach uh, that I'm going to give him witty inventions. <laughs> and then he said, Jeremiah 33, 3. And it says that uh, just call upon the Lord and he'll show you things that you do not know. Just kind of put it in a nutshell there, but that's basically what it says. He'll show you things that you do not know. So he said witty inventions to you, and that's awesome. So just receive that for whatever that is. I delivered it on the messenger today. Amen. Just receive that. Amen. Uh, uh, Veronica, can you come up here real quick, please? Oh, I'm putting you on the spot. Oh, no. Can you hand me the microphone real quick? I, I, just, I want you to share something here. Um, here last... Here last, uh, about a month and a half ago or so, I had had a word, a uh, prophetic word that I gave uh, after praise and worship. I don't know if it was a Sunday morning or Sunday night, I don't remember, but I gave the word, and the word was about uh, the corporate worship here in, in our fellowship here, that as we worship the Lord, that we're moving into a season where when we worship the Lord, that heaven was going to come down, the kingdom was going to come down, and there was going to be healing angels and healing anointing ministering to people in this place, and people were actually going to start being healed uh, during the praise and the worship uh, 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 a meeting or a service or whatever you want to call it while we were worshiping the Lord together. And I gave that word strong. And I gave it strong because I knew I'd heard from the Lord. And, and there's a lot of things I don't say that I'm not sure yet and I hold on to for a while. But that was so strong in me that morning that I delivered that. And I'm just like, okay, Lord, I know you said it, so start doing it or whatever. And then uh, 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 Veronica texted me here last Monday with a praise report. And I just want you to share it. Absolutely. Just share Happily. what the Lord did. Happily. Because it, it was just so exciting. So during praise and worship, you know, everyone began to shout. And it had actually moved from word to just shouting. And someone was blowing a horn. And um, <laughs> I heard the words on the inside of me, you're healed. And it just brought tears to my eyes because I knew that I had heard it. Um, and immediately when I heard it, pain began to leave my back. Now for about a year, I've had like popping in my back because even if I bent forward, I would pop, and it got to the point where it got so bad. I had such bad lower back pain that I began to see a chiropractor, and it was like twice a week I was seeing this chiropractor, and every time I went in, he everything in me would pop. And while I was there, of course, <coughs> not only was it my back, but it turned out that it was my neck, and my neck curved in a different different direction than hmm. a normal neck should, and he showed me these x-rays and all that. So um, <laughs> during during praise and worship, the pain just began to lift and lift and lift and then I started feeling a little bit goofy because then during um, um, during uh, <laughs> service I'm sitting in my chair and oh, I start doing good. this mm -hmm. and I started thinking well people are going to think I'm a little bit weird and I even told Liz because Liz and I Liz Soto and I both work um, for the school district we work in the same place so I was just so giddy the next day <laughs> but while I'm sitting in church I began to lift my legs and my left leg is fine. My lower back is usually the right side of my back. So I knew that when I lifted my right leg that, okay, right. I still felt a little bit of tension. But I knew what I heard, and I stood on that. And during the week, I'd say about Tuesday or Wednesday, the pain tried to come back. Wow. Um, so I just kept standing on what I heard. And I knew what I had heard inside was it wasn't um, your healed butt or <laughs> your healed if. Right. Um, you know, or you're healed, you know, but only 90%. I just kept standing on what I heard, and I knew what I heard, and I was healed. So, and it was amazing that very first night, because I was asleep, and usually to, to turn around in my sleep, um, <laughs> I have to do it in like a three-part session of, of moving over. It's, I turn, and then I turn, 
<coughs> and then I get to my mm, side. Mm. And the very first time that I was asleep that first night, Sunday night, and I turned all the way over. In my sleep, I was even thanking God. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. You, Thank you, God. Because I knew that it was gone. But it did try to come back about mm. Tuesday or Wednesday. And I had to just keep telling myself, no, I know what I heard. I'm healed. And, and that's all there is to it. It's not coming back. And I just kept thanking God for my healing. And it is completely gone now. Yes. Come on. I went back. <laughs> <laughs> I was so giddy to get back to the chiropractor on Thursday just to find out. And I didn't say anything to him. I just went in. And I was just real excited, just sitting in the chair I always sit in. And there's like three little machines that I, I usually go through a station. So I'm sitting there. And he walks in, and he starts to adjust my neck, and he starts doing this. And usually the routine is he does this to my neck, and then all of a sudden he yeah. – and that didn't happen this time. And I just sat there, and I just got excited. And then he took me to the next station, <laughs> and then he put me down, and, and it's this machine I, I hold on to, and it lowers me all the way down to a laying on my stomach position. Right. And he starts doing what he normally does, and he pushes on my back. Nothing. Nothing popped. Yeah. And I was like, you know, excited. Yes. And then he – <laughs> He took me to the next station, and he folded me in half like he always does. And, <laughs> and he goes to push on me, and nothing popped. And then I laid on the other side knowing that's the routine, yeah. and he had already walked away from me there to go nothing. right on the, my chart. Just, that yeah. He says, well, you're, you're looking really good. Now, mind you, he had just told me my last visit that this was going to be a long road to recovery. <laughs> And uh, so for him to say, well, I guess we'll see you back in two weeks, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. Come so on, praise God. Praise God, man. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. <clears throat> you know, that was so good. I was sitting out at a baseball game on Monday night when she sent me that text, and uh, I just got so excited, and it wasn't because a guy hit a home run either, man. I was just excited <laughs> to hear that praise report, and... Uh, you know, you got to believe the prophet. You just called yourself a prophet. Yeah, I prophesied that day, and that's you got to believe that when the when the, when there's a prophetic word given, uh, you receive it. Amen. Amen. And so so and 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 she uh, had told me because I had reminded her about that word that that we had gave here that morning or whatever it was, and and she had said that she had forgotten about that, but I reminded her of that. So. You know, God God does things for a purpose, and when He says things, He wants to do what He says. It's just, you, and it's not always, it's never God's fault that things don't happen. It's always our fault that we don't receive it. And we stick to our guns with it. We don't give up on it. We don't give up on it. Whatever you're believing God for, dig your feet in and trust Him and read the Word, stand on the Word, get a foundation to speak from, praise God, and from the Word of God, and just go for it till you receive the manifestation. Trust, rest, manifest. The Lord spoke that to me in 2008 when I was going through leukemia. Mike, it's your job to trust me. It's your job to rest in the trust that you get, that, that you develop uh, in me as you study the word, read the word, find out what the word says about the circumstance, the situation. And as you trust and rest in that, then I can work and provide the manifestation that you're trusting me for and resting in, in for. Trust, rest, and manifest. Let the Lord do it. And one of the awesome things, and I learned, I, I, you know, I, I've heard this before, but when, she, when Veronica said that she just came, she said no, said no to it when it tried to come back, she resisted it. Well, I don't believe that's scriptural. Well, it is scripture. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Pain's not of God. Disease isn't of God. Sickness isn't of God. You falling and breaking your arm isn't of God, so we can teach you a lesson while you lay in the hospital. None of that is true. Things happen in life because things happen in life. But when we're going through a fiery trial and we're going through stuff, we're learning things. We should be growing. We should be learning some things, but we should be trusting God and waiting for His will to take place in our life, which His will is healing. Amen. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. Jesus set me free. You know what I mean? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're going to like me or not like me today by the time I'm finished, but that's okay. Praise God, because I love you. Amen. Turn over to John chapter 5. So <clears throat> I'm not going to be rushed today and hurry just because everybody wants to go eat or whatever. So I'm just going to do what the Holy Spirit wants me to do. When I'm done, I'll, I'll be done. You guys know how I am. Whenever I'm finished, I'm finished. And, uh, but there is a word I got to deliver today that the Lord gave me this morning, 
and uh, I'm going to deliver it by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit today. And uh, when I'm finished, I'm finished. But here, uh, <clears throat> it's been probably about a year and a half to two years ago. Um, we, we, well, I'll get to that in just a second. Let me say this first. We've been speaking and saying and declaring, not only over Madeira, over our region that we live in, our county, uh, the, the area that we're in here, the valley, things like that. We've been decreeing and declaring that the Lord would come and that harvest would come in, people would get saved. Uh, there'd be a move of God like never before. We've been praying that because we know we've entered into that season, so we're able to, to go after that in the spirit realm. And sometimes it takes years of intercession and years of being faithful and years of praying and sitting before the Lord, years of obedience before God, be, uh, before, before you can see a, a manifestation or, or results sometimes. Would you all agree with me on that? Amen. Sometimes it takes time. And uh, we understand that. And, and uh, <clears throat> I believe God is, 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 is not of God of hurry. I believe He's of God of, of wisdom and knowledge and revelation. And He's a God of perfect timing. And uh, so if we're listening and we're paying attention, and I hope this isn't the only place you ever hear the word preached or read about the word. And I hope, I hope that God, there's other people in your life that God uses to speak to you and you read, you read about or you read their, their material or different things that they've got revelations. I hope that's true. But if you're paying attention and, and listening to the prophets and listening to people that are in the flow of this, see, because a lot of people don't care. They just try to do this on their own. They try to serve God on their own, and they think their pastor is going to do everything for them, and that's never going to work, never going to happen. I will never do everything for you. I don't have time. Pastor don't have time to do everything for you. Sometimes you've just got to put your big boy pants on and stand on the word and believe God yourself. God, this is exciting, man. Thanks for choosing me to deliver this today, Lord. So, you know, we, we, we come to a place in our life where if, if we're smart and we're serious about the things of the Lord, we will turn our ear to the things of the Lord, and we will seek and search and go after everything that's of God that we can. Because um, I know that my brain, I just don't have enough wisdom to help people. I know that the Holy Spirit on the inside of me has plenty of wisdom to help people through what they're going through at certain times in their life. And the Holy Spirit knows exactly what to say to me for my personal life, just like he does you, amen? He knows right where you're at with him. He knows right where you're going with him. And he's just saying, take my hand and let's walk. Let me lead you into the full manifestation of the fullness of God that he has for your life. The full plan that he has for your life. Not just to sit around, wait around. Oh, I know God's going to do it someday in the sweet by and by and all that good stuff. No, God's saying now is the day. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that I have life. I've given you life more abundantly. Now it's your turn to give life out. And the best thing you can do, it's just like if you want to be a doctor or if you want to be a surgeon. The best thing you can do is go to school. You're required to go to school. You're required to take tests. You're required to do hands-on and spend a certain amount of time in the hospital learning and this and that. Well, if you're going to be good at what you do, then you've got to spend time with what you want to be good at. Well, you're a preacher, and you preach from the pulpit, and that's easy for you to say. Listen, folks, we all are preachers. We all are teachers. We all are evangelists. We all have. Now, I know there's a certain five-fold ministry gift, and God does appoint certain people for those ministry gifts, but we all have Christ. If you're born again, you have Christ living on the inside of you, and he has a perfect plan for you. And he wants you to be a person that waters in other people's lives. He wants you to be a person that plants seeds in other people's lives. He wants you to be a person that plants the love of God in other people's lives. But see, we're in a season now where if you're just listening and you want the heart of God and you're seeking the heart of God, he is showing us as a body, and I know not everybody will catch on or even wants to catch on. I understand that. But those of you that are and those of you that do want to, he's showing us what we need to declare and say over our household, over our region, over our jobs, over our families, over our church, over our lives, whatever. He's showing us what we need to say and do, praise God. And one of the things he's been talking to us about here in this local fellowship is to call this place a hospital. 
hospital and start looking and start saying and start demanding that the harvest comes, the broken comes, the disease comes, the lame comes, and, and the people that need deliverance from addiction and drugs and porn and alcohol and every other goofy thing that the devil has for people to bring them in here so they can get healed, set free, and delivered. So that's what we have been saying around here in a nutshell. Now, you, a lot of you have been around here a long time, so you understand what I'm saying. You know we've been declaring this place, speaking of this place, okay? So the thing is, is the doors have opened for that. We've been seeing people come in and get healed. We've been seeing uh, people's lives transformed. I've been, I, listen... Because of the position I'm in, I talk to people weekly. There's several of you that I hear from weekly that share with me what God's doing, or I see maybe something that you're doing that, for, that the Lord's using you to do. So I'm see, you're seeing results. We're seeing manifestations. We're seeing God. Some of you I talked in I, I, I talk in depth with during the week sometimes. And it's just, I sit there and it's just awesome to hear what God's showing you because he's showing me pretty much the same thing. So we're tracking, things are happening, good things are going on. And um, I'll tell you, you know, we've been declaring this and about a year and a half ago to two years ago, my son Shane had a vision while we were here in church. And this vision that he had, he said he was standing there and he said he kind of looked up. And when he looked up, he said he saw this big old gate. Like a big, huge gate, like, you know, you see out in front of, like, like, like I was over at Graceland, Elvis the Pelvis' house a few weeks ago. He has this big old gate in front of his house, like one of those kind of gates. It was, all, it was sitting up here, up in the ceiling, and he said all of a sudden, he said he saw this gate just tilt open like this, and when he did, he said he saw just water flood into this place. And he said when he saw this water flood into this place, it began to pool up, and he said the people, he could see, it wasn't an open vision, it was an inward vision, he saw it on the inside of his spirit, man. He said that he, he, he saw the people like us, like you sitting out here, standing out here, and he said the water started to fill up, and it filled up to about the waist, he said. And he said that everybody was just in it, and he said the people were worshiping, and he saw people lifting their hands, praising God like we do. And he said, all of a sudden, he said after the water came in, angels came in. And he said when the angels came in, he said they were positioned over the water, and they weren't in the water. They were hovering over the water, and they were waiting to touch for healing. And um, <clears throat> when he shared this vision with me, it made a lot of sense because during that time, I had heard Dad and I would heard some other folks around here talk about how there's been a well that's opened here and just... And how God is, is moving and this, the angels are here and healing and all this kind of stuff. And, this and, that. And, and I was talking with a pastor from Oklahoma on the phone uh, 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 Friday night. I was talking to this guy. And we got to talking and, and, and um, he's sharing. So this first time we'd ever talked, we were just kind of talking about each other's churches. And um, he said, you know what, the Lord, he said, the Lord gave me a a little while back about churches in America. And I said, oh, really? I said, well, what was it? And he said, well, this is what happened. And he, word for word, the same vision that Shane had, he said he had. He's telling me this, and on the inside, I'm going, <laughs> you know, I'm all excited. I'm just letting him finish. I didn't want to send it, interrupt him. It's word for word, the vision that he saw that God was, that God was, has already started and getting ready to do even more in the churches of America was the same vision of the healing waters. And you can look here, and we're going to read about this for a second, about the waters, the pool of Bethesda. See, a lot of folks, there's some folks in here that don't believe what I just said, but that can happen. That was just for biblical times. What do you think we read? The Bible. It's, it's, it's called the supernatural. It's a thing that we can't work up and make happen. All we can do is believe it, receive it, and yield to it while the, our supernatural God causes the super to come on the natural. Come on, man. And so it's a thing where I focus. What I'm trying to say is this, as a body. Now, this is kind of an in-house preaching this morning for the people that are here and that are locked in and hooked in. We are called, we are called 
to be prosperous people and to be a people of healing and miracles. That's the two angels that are established in this church. An angel of blessing, of prosperity, of wealth, and an angel of miracles and healing. See, it, this isn't something that dad just, oh, I'm just going to make this up so we can have people come to our church and they can just believe this and, and hope we can get money out of their pocket and I can go on my Hawaiian cruise and, you know, no. No. This is something that God's shown us here and some of you have seen the angels. Some, I hear reports all the time. Some of you see manifestations in the spirit during our services and you see things happen. And I'm going to tell you right now that I know a lot of it's not a bunch of goofiness. A lot of it's the real deal and I believe it. We are a supernatural people. Oh, you can punch me in the face and it'll hurt because I'm natural. We're not, we, we are. We're made from dirt. We are absolutely but we serve a supernatural God and we can believe in the supernatural. We can believe for addictions to leave people while they're sitting in meetings. We can believe for ourselves that we'll get delivered while we're sitting in an atmosphere like we're sitting in right now where the Holy Spirit's here, the presence of God's here, and it doesn't matter how many people try to resist it, He's still going to show up because there's a few that believe it. And I'm telling you, a lot of folks are looking for the spectacular. If you look for the spectacular all the time, you're going to miss it. There's little things that happen throughout the week, throughout the day. There's little things that you say by the Holy Spirit to certain people during the week, during the day, that will transform and revolutionize their life. You've got to look at it that way. You might walk out of your house someday, and the Holy Ghost might come on you when you walk by somebody in a wheelchair. He might have you yank that person out of the wheelchair and they get totally transformed and healed right before your eyes. That could happen. I believe that. It, you're right. It did a few years back. Happened to hide me up in the Bay Area with a young man. We got to take, listen, and I say this to myself too. We got to take limits off of God. He is not a limited God, He is a God of His Word. And if he says in his word he'll do it, guys, he'll do it. Just be available to do it. I don't know every scripture. I don't even know the word of God that well. I know enough to stand on it and believe him and this and that. But, man, I'm open to do whatever he wants me to do. And if he says something to me that I don't fully understand, well, then I get in here and I find out what does that mean. Show me a scripture. I want to know, Lord. That's relationship. That's relationship. So what I'm saying today is, now look at, let's just read this. So I said John chapter 5, look at um, verse 1. John chapter 5, verse 1. It says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda. Bethesda, that word Bethesda means a place of outpouring. Having five porches, the number five in the Bible and the scriptures is the number, uh, is, the number five is, is the, uh, the meaning of number five is grace or favor. Verse three, in these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Now, let's, let's. We can read these scriptures and just, oh, yeah, we've heard these scriptures before, and people got in the water, and the angels stirred it, and people got healed. That's an, awesome, that's an awesome story in the Bible. It is. But it's a reality to me. This story is a reality to me. Number one, because it's in the Bible. Number two, there's been a vision that my son had. Number three, I talked to a pastor who had the same vision. Number four, I know that healing takes place in these waters. We just heard about one. No one laid hands on her. No one touched her. No one called her out by a word of knowledge. Nothing. She got healed because the presence of the Lord came in. She heard, you're healed. It's very easy for us just to go, oh, yeah, well, man, that sure would be nice if I was healed. No. 
You hear those words, man, you grab them. Did you know you'll have what you say? I got a great story for that. You want to hear it? When I was diagnosed with leukemia in January of 2008, I went into my first chemotherapy appointment. Walked in there, did my six hours, walked out of the hospital. I can show you right where I was at, or at the doctor's place there. I can show you right where I was at. And every time I go down there and I walk by this place, I think about this and the truth. I stepped off the curb. And when I stepped off the curb, I didn't step off the curb. I went, I'll only do two treatments. And my doctor just got telling me I'm probably going to have to do four or five. It just came out of my mouth. I'll do two treatments. That's it. I said it right in front of my wife. I don't know, you might have already been gone, but I said it right in front of my wife. I did two treatments. Amen. Actually, I probably didn't even have to do two treatments because it was already gone. But I felt peace, so I went ahead and went with it. It's a long story. You don't want to get into all that, how I came about that. But I did two treatments of chemotherapy. You will have what you say and what you believe. Good or bad? Train your spirit, train your mind to say what God's saying. Believe me, I'm working at this right now as we speak. I start to say something stupid out of my mouth. I just want God to arrest me. And then even if I go through with it and I do it, I am quick, man, to repent and backpedal and say, wait, those habits, those mind habits, all that stuff is out of me. I don't want it. I want to say what God has to say about the situation. It's very easy to get worked up and be led by your emotions and say stuff. That's easy to do, you know. We all got to work on that, I'm sure, amen? Or am I the only one? Praise God. But you have what you say. Now, I believe that this story here is for such a time as this. I believe it. It says, verse 3, In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. We have a lot of people in the body of Christ that are waiting for the move of the, of the water instead of believing and grabbing a hold of what the Father has already said about you. He's already said it. Jesus went to the cross. A lot of people want to argue this kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's the truth. He went to the cross. The Bible says he took pain. He took sickness. He took disease. He took everything upon him. That was of the devil. For us. I don't have the magical answer or the, the exact answer of reason why people die young and things happen and all this kind of, I don't know. All I know is the word of God is true. And if I'll have relationship with him and if the devil tries to put the heebie-jeebie on me, if the devil tries to curse me or come after me, all I know to do is stand on the word and fight back. With the word. That's all I know to do. That's all I know to do. And the more that you exercise the word of God in your life, the more you'll grow, the stronger your faith will get, and the devil will turn into this little fly. He is called the father of, what is he, Beelzebub, the father of the flies, right? Lord of the flies. Pull out your fly swatter. What? What, devil? With long life, God is satisfied. Oh, there is a fly. Hold still just a second. With long life, God. <laughs> we definitely have to have a prayer meeting for Clarence. Raise him from the dead. With long life, God will satisfy me and show me my salvation. I will live and not die, and I will declare the work of the Lord. That's what the Bible says. So when the devil lies to you and says he's going to kill you early, you just say what God said about you. See, it's good to get ammunition. Two-edged sword in our hand, baby. Use that tongue, man, that two-edged sword. Let it come out of your mouth. One side's God's words, one side's your mouth. 
line it up with God's word. You fight, that's it. You, I don't want to be slapping flies with my tongue, I can tell you that, but I know what you mean, sister. I totally get that one. I totally get it. But it's the truth. You never run at your giant with your mouth shut. David did not go, oh, I hope I can hit him between the eyes. David said, you're dead today because you're messing with God's people. And, you're met, and you, are, you are not circumcised. You are not in the covenant with God, and you're going down. And he did exactly by the anointing of God what God called him to do for that day. I mean, I don't know. I could be wrong, but I don't. I, I mean, David could have woke up that morning knowing that he had to go out and slay the giant. He probably did. But maybe a month or so before that, he had no clue. He's just out there tending his sheep, worshiping the Lord, spending time with the Father. But then a day came where God said, I can trust this guy. He knows me so well. He's got such covenant with me, such relationship with me. I can use him to defeat Goliath and take over. Be that guy. Be that girl. Be that person. That so you're ready in season, out of season. You're ready to get after it whenever you got to get after it. You're so focused on God. You're so full of God. You're so full of intimacy with the Lord. You know him so well that you're ready to go when he says go. Priori Some of you need to prioritize your life. God first. Your spouse second. Oh, that's going to go over real big. Your kids third. Your friends fourth. It should be God first. Oh, I'm preaching it. Should be God first. Has to be. Only way your marriage will work is if you put God first. Only way you stay in relationship with someone is if you put the Lord in the middle of that relationship. Your kids might not like you at the moment, but you just keep putting God before them. Amen. Keep speaking over them. Keep speaking the word over them. Keep speaking it over them. Keep speaking it over them. Keep speaking it over them. Stand there for them. Put on the armor of God. Be ready for anything that comes. See, a lot of folks, you know, well, I'll believe it when I see it. That's not faith. Not even close. I believe leukemia was leaving my body before the doctor said you're cancer free. We can't find any in your body at all. But I believed it was gone. Well, how can you do that? 1 Peter 2.24. That's one simple scripture. By his stripes we are healed. Pastor Mike, I've been waiting for two months, three months, five months, a year. Keep standing. Keep speaking. Keep believing. Keep letting the Lord mature you. Keep letting the Lord mold you. Keep letting the Lord talk to you. Keep letting the Lord deal with you. Keep letting the Lord talk to you, use you. Keep going. Keep going. Keep speaking the word. Keep believing the word. Keep living the word. Every time the devil pops his head up, speak the word. Pull out the prophetic word. Use what God has said about your life. That's being a Christian. That's being a disciple. That's being someone that's following God. Listen, man. The Western church has been so desensitized and brainwashed with what really being a Christian is. It's not about works or about what we can do or what you can do or what a pastor or a preacher or a prophet can do. It's not about any of that. We can't do anything. When we realize we can't do anything without the Father, that's when we become humble. That's when we become a servant. That's when we become a disciple. When we put Him first over every situation. 
That's when we become pliable. I heard Brother Alga Husky say this one time. He said, humility equals harnessed power. Being humble before the Lord. And humble doesn't mean, well, I just blew it again, God, and I'm just low down, dirty, lower than a worm's belly. That's not humble. That's cursing yourself. <laughs> That's what the devil wants you to say about yourself. He wants you to hate yourself and not love yourself and not, you know. I know this is kind of simple today, but listen, this is the, the, the word of the Lord. We are adopted by the Father. We are not orphans. He did not leave us an orphan. He adopted us into him. He is in us. We're in him. Ephesians says we're seated far above principalities. We're seated together at the right hand of God in Christ Jesus, guys. That's who you are. That's the reality of it. You give your life to Christ, that's the reality of it. That's who you are. Get your eyes off the circumstances and the natural things, the things that are going on. Keep your eyes on the word. The word will manifest into that situation that you're needing. That's how it works. Sometimes it happens overnight. Sometimes it can, it can, you know, Veronica waited almost a year or a year for the manifestation. I know she believes the word. I know she, I didn't talk in depth to her about that, but I know she loves God. She believes in healing. She believes the word, all that stuff. But all of a sudden, boom, manifestation. I remember Todd, Todd Bailey. Brother Todd, he'll be here at the end of September. Todd Bailey. He spoke, he called me one day during that in 2008, called me in February 2008. It was a rainy day. I was sitting inside, wishing I could go outside, but I had to kind of stay in the house for a couple weeks at the time. And I'm sitting in there, and the phone rings, and it's Todd, and I pick it up, and he starts talking. He said, Mike, the Lord spoke to me this morning. He wanted me to tell you that scripture and the word there, that uh, this affliction will not come back on you a second time. I received that, and then he said, you got to wait. Sometimes you just got to wait. Wait in expectation for the manifestation to take place in your life. And what are you waiting for, Mike? I'm waiting for healing, for that manifested healing power to go through my body and burn out leukemia or whatever God's got to do. I'm waiting for it. He said, while you're waiting, expect that while you're waiting. And as you wait, and he used Acts chapter 2 about the people, the 150 that were in the upper room. They were waiting. Waiting. They had no idea who the Holy Ghost was. They had no idea what praying in the Holy Ghost was. They had no idea what tongues were. They had no idea what was going to go on. All they know is they heard the word from Jesus, and he said, go wait, and as you wait, there's going to come upon you the Holy Spirit. They went in there, and they prayed, and boom, the manifestation hit, and they said it was like tongues of fire on their head. That thing came in that place. That manifestation of the Holy Spirit came in, and that was the birth of the church that we're in today, guys. The New Testament church. We have power. God's given you power. He's given you authority. And you can use your mouth, and you can use your tongue with power and authority. And that whole time while I was going through that junk, I was singing in the shower. I was praising God. I was singing songs that you might make fun of me if I sung them right now, but I didn't care. I was singing about my white blood cells. I was singing that my white blood cells are an army. They're forming. They're kicking the devil's rear end out of my blood. Praise God. I mean, I was singing all kinds of stuff. And I'm not saying this to brag on me. I'm saying this to brag on God. I'm saying this because, yes, and I am bragging that I was doing the Word. You do the Word too. The Word works. The Word brings results. If the devil's messing with you and saying you're never going to make it, you're going to be addicted, you're going to be an idiot all your life, you're a loser, if he's saying all this stuff to you, you tell him to shut up and you find out what God says about you. You turn your mouth around and you start speaking the word and you'll see results. I don't plan on getting this wild and yelling and all that stuff, but this, it's just, that's just the way it goes, man. Because it's serious to me. This is for real. This is my life that I'm talking about here. Yours too. I'm in agreement with every single person sit in here that wants all of God and wants to do what God's called them to do and wants life and health and blessing and peace and strength and wisdom and knowledge and fire glory to God 
I'm with you. Because I know there's a lot of people in here. If they were up here right now, they'd be shouting and saying the same things. Because it's our life. It's our life. Jesus. And seeing people get touched and blessed and healed and helped. You can't do what I'm doing right here if you don't love people. You can't do what you're doing right now, serving the Lord, if you don't love people and want to help when you see them struggling. That's the truth. But there's people laying around this. Now, look at this. Look at this. Verse 5. Now, a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. I mean, can you imagine, Veronica, living in that pain for 38 years? These scriptures right here. Isn't that awesome how God does that kind of stuff? See, and that's more than likely just a confirmation to you that it's over with. It's done. And if he mouths off, you just cut his head off again like you did. You just resist it. Believe it or not, the devil will use people to say, oh, that pain's going to come back and all that kind of stuff. My doctor told me in June, oh, yeah, that leukemia is coming back eventually. That's why you got to keep coming down here once a year. That's his job. Security. You're right. Well, anyways, okay, I can't get into all that because that's another story in itself. I don't care what the devil says. Why would we listen to somebody that God calls a liar? How many of you enjoy hanging out with liars? There was this guy I used to hang out with growing up. He became... I mean, these, some of these stories were, at, I mean, getting stranded in the forest and eating bark soup to survive. Come on, dude. What? I mean, seriously? I mean, he got over into such habitual lying that every time he would say something in his mouth, I never believed him. It got to that point. I could never believe him. I mean, who wants to, and I, and I stopped hanging around the guy. I just got tired of hearing all this weird stuff. Could never believe anything he said. Who wants to hang out with a liar? <sighs> he starts to lie to you. You resist. Tell him no. Shut up. And you move on. And if you need help, call somebody. You notice I said call somebody. Don't call me all the time. Call somebody that you can trust and believe with and pray. There's been times I've called pastor. My dad. And you know what he said is sometimes? You need to get before the Lord and find out what the Lord's saying about that on your own. I have no idea. And that's a good thing sometimes. We need to grow, man. <laughs> 38 years. Verse 6. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, which means that Jesus had walked by him several times already. If he knew he'd been in that condition for a long time, Jesus has already walked by. Well, Jesus healed everybody. No, he did not. You read about a lot of the healings that Jesus performed in his ministry was because most of the time it was people that came to him with faith. That'll blow your minds right there. That's, that's, that's accounted for. You can read. Huh? With faith, yes. With faith. Now, listen, don't beat yourself up today. Because you will, when you're believing God for something, there will be times where you will get frustrated. There was at least a couple times that I can remember going through that in 2008 on my bed. I grabbed my pillow, put it over my face, and yelled as loud as I could yell. So nobody else could hear me. Punched my bed a couple times. Why is it taking so long? God! Tired of this! I'm just being honest. It's like Dad says, he desires truth from the inward parts. He can work with truth. Where you're at who you are, 
when you come before him open and honest, he can work with that. We will get frustrated sometimes. We will get in a hurry. We will want to grab the wheel and drive ourselves, or get ahead. But God knows when and how. And what, don't beat yourself up if you, lose your, if you lose your cool, if you get frustrated while you're in that waiting place. It happens. Just repent and move on. God understands who you are, where you're at, what's going on. He does. You fight the good fight of faith. A good fight is a fight that you win. And that's what he says we can do. Fight the good fight. Fight the good fight. You win, Mike. You win, Josie. You win, Carol. You win, Tammy. You win. Just keep fighting. Keep standing. Keep living in my promises. Keep living in faith, knowing that Jesus has provided for you and your family, and he loves you. It says he was, had infirmity for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? Now look, the man responded, verse 7. The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. In other words, beats me to the water and I can't get my healing, but they get it. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. That word rise there means wake up. Wake up. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked, and that day was the Sabbath. Now let me say something here. That man had a choice. When Jesus said, rise and get up and pick up your bed, your heel, when Jesus said that, he had a choice. Many of us in here have a choice. We have a choice. Do we want to believe the word? Do we want to let go of things that we know are nothing but torment, fear, depression, sickness, disease? Do we want to let go of that stuff and trust God? Or do we want to stay the same? That man had a choice. Jesus did not grab him by the arm and say, get up! He said, rise. That man could have said, no, I don't want to. I want to wait for someone to come down. And you know what? Jesus would have said, have a blessed day. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he wouldn't have. Maybe Jesus would have jerked him up. I don't know. But that man had a choice. To stay down and to be lame or to get up because this man said get up. There's been times in my life where I've had men or women of God or, uh, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ say certain things to me that they might not even know when they said it that I was being confronted in the spirit. And there's things, there's things that I've learned from when certain people say certain things to me. By the, and you know when the Holy Spirit's saying something to you. You know it. And if you don't, then you need to spend time with him so you do know it because it will keep your life corrected and on the good path. The Holy Spirit will. And he will use your neighbor. He will use your kids. He will use your grandparents. He will use somebody, your coworker. He will use somebody at certain times because you're not getting something to say something to you so you get it. And he said to this man, rise. That man believed. What Jesus said, and he rose, and he was sealed. And you can read the story on that, but I'm telling you that we have to respond to the word of the Lord. We have to respond to it. We have to be in an attitude on a daily basis of how am I going to get to respond to what the Lord wants me to do today? 
This place is a place of outpouring. Believer's Church of Madera is a place of outpouring. This church, this city, there's churches here as well that are believing God for this. This is a place where God is moving. The waters are here. The healing waters are here. The love of God's here. All this kind of stuff. And I'm going to say this, and I say this very, very, so much in love, I'd give you a kiss if I could. Some of you in this place today have been dealing with stuff for years. And you won't listen to what the Lord's telling, telling you about that. He's used people in your life to speak supernaturally, or excuse me, to speak by the Holy Spirit into your life about certain situations and certain things that you've been dealing with and in torment and struggling with, and you won't listen to the word of the Lord. And if you want to be free from it, you better listen. I'm not looking at anybody in here because I don't want you to think I'm trying to single anybody out because I don't even know who you are. I'm just saying that by the Spirit of God right now, that He's been saying things to you and through people, but you won't let go of it. You will not have any results unless you believe what the Word of the Lord says. Yes, Lord, I understand that. Now, here's another thing. You've got to be obedient first. Get in line don't wait for that thing to leave. Get in line with God first. Be obedient, and then he'll prune you, and it'll leave. That's how it works. John, John 15, chapter 15. This message today is for every single person in here, including myself. Here to encourage you, to, to exhort you today, to just show you what God's doing and, and speak from the heart of what the Lord's wanting to do in all of our lives and in this fellowship, and not only in this fellowship, but beyond these walls into your community, your neighborhoods, your jobs, all that stuff. This is all for us to do. I feel like I've gone a few different directions today, but that word I just gave about letting things go, you can stay the same or you can grow. That goes for all of us. i got to remind myself every day, I don't want to stay the same. I want to grow in the things of the Lord. Not only for me, but to bless others. We're living in a land where the harvest is ripe. And it is right now easy to pick if you'll look for it. We're going to have people chasing us down just to pray for them, guys. That's where we're headed. Some of you right now during the week are getting phone calls weekly from people. Can you pray for my grandpa? Can you pray for my aunt? Can you pray for so-and-so? Can you come over? Can you do this? Why is that happening? Because the harvest is ready. And a lot of people are getting the hell scared out of them. Literally. The way this world's going. This isn't no news to us. We know it was going this way. But arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Darkness will cover the earth, but the glory of God will overtake that darkness, and the sinner and the Gentile will see the glory and the love and the healing and the light of God on you, and they'll come to you because they're dying and they need Jesus. This has been absolutely fun today. I hope everybody who leaves here still loves me. I pray that this blessed you today. I pray that, that you can kind of just get an understanding of that vision that I shared about the pool and the water and the healing what I'm saying is bring people here that need to be healed, man. If you need healing, drink from the waters of healing that are in this ministry. That mantle is here to receive healing today. Amen. Every time we gather, I'm expecting God to heal people. That's my prayer every time. We got some meetings coming up. This fall is going to be outrageously awesome. We have some people coming in here. The, the, uh, the next three or four months, we actually up until the first of the year, that are just awesome men and women of God that have very strong healing oils on every single one of them that's coming. And I'm saying this today, you need to ask, you need to start preparing to ask people to come. 
that need a miraculous healing. Jesse and Amy Champ are going to be here the last Sunday of this month. They move in a strong uh, healing anointing. Next month uh, in October, or uh, Todd Bailey is going to be here as well. He moves in a strong prophetic word of knowledge healing anointing as well. Teaching gift, just a phenomenal teaching gift on Todd Bailey. He'll be here at the, uh, 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 in, at the end of September. And then we got a young couple coming September 13th on a Wednesday night. They're just getting started in ministry. They've come out of Todd Bentley's ministry, Alex and Jordan Parkinson. Awesome young couple of God. They love God so much. And they're going to be here, and they, they, they move in a strong healing, a gifting of healing as well. They're going to be here. There's so many opportunities. Uh, October 13th, 14th, and 15th, uh, Charlie Champ is going to be with us. This guy is, 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 is um, he's a prophet, but the, the creative miracles that happens during his meetings are phenomenal. He's one of the most humblest guys I've ever talked to in my life. Very soft-spoken and loving. I mean, I've seen it. I, I've seen it with my own eyes. People get gold teeth during his meetings, brand new teeth. Creative miracles, eyes open, things happen. Just while he's ministering, this kind of stuff happens in his meetings. Phenomenal stuff. Just, I mean, good stuff. We need people. You need to bring, if you need healing, expect it. We need to bring people that need healing. Ask him, do you want to live in sickness or do you want to come get healed? Why not? Ask people, bring them. We have, and then and Stephen Powell's coming in November, and then Prophet Huggins is coming in December. We've got an amazing fall coming up. God has put, and Tom Terry's going to be here in September too. Just wild stuff happening. God just put all this together for a purpose. And I believe they're going to bring a piece to the puzzle here of what's going on in this region before the end of this year is over with. And going into 2018, it's just going to explode. I really believe that by the Spirit of God. No, come on. Yeah, come on. I, I can read you like a book, man. Sorry. Here. I'm sorry. I'm pumping up the okay. bit. Just share it. Um, yes, we had some amazing meetings here. And um, people need to understand that God establishes things in the heavenlies. Mm -hmm. And what had happened over this week, Thursday, started Thursday, and it <coughs> ended uh, yesterday, we had we already have an open heaven here, but um, as I got home in the evening, um, I had heard I, I get visionary, so I hear things, mm, I see so things, nice. and what I would like you to understand is what Michael is saying <coughs> is take hold of this. I was sitting in my living room yesterday, and I'm going through a transitional time, just like all of you probably standing for things. My back has been healed, but that's a different story for another day. But what I want, to, want you to understand is I was standing in my living room and I could hear. There's a story in 2 Samuel chapter 5 where it's, it talks oh, yeah. about um, David hearing yes. the wind <coughs> and the sound of the trees. The trees. I'm, gonna, I'm here to tell you angels. that Lord Seboeth is here. <laughs> For the angels and the let trees. me finish the story. What happened was David had came in to his time to step in as king. Okay, new season. Right. Okay, so the Lord said, should I go out and get him? Mm -hmm. He said, wait until you hear the sound of the wind in the trees. I literally heard angels coming through the trees yeah. into Madeira. Yep. More angels. Yeah. The heavenly hosts of heaven are here. Yes. And what happened, the story goes on to say that he named that place. He said, Lord, should I go up? He said, go up. And he said... Um, I will give him into your hand. But he called that place Baal Perizam. Yeah. It's the breaking forth of many waters. Whew, man. I'm telling I even, you. I didn't even know that right there. That's good. I'm telling you that the, the Lord is here. Hmm. His angel armies are here. Yes. And he's helping you get into the place where you need to be for breakthrough. Thank Say you, breakthrough. Father. Breakthrough, yes. I have breakthrough. I have breakthrough. Because you, of the Lord of hosts. Because of the Lord of hosts. Yes. You're not alone. Yeah, you're not. That's right. We're not. We're not. Amen. Like the breaking forth of many waters. waters. Those angels are here at your disposal for your breakthrough. Yeah, amen. 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 Thank you, Tammy. That's good. That is a good word.
confirmation. Now, see, that's it's that's that's some pretty deep stuff there. You got to get in the Word and study that. You know, I mean, that's that's some good revelation. I got some revelation listening to that, and I know that they're and I, I, you know, having that vision of the angels coming down over the city park here and coming down Yosemite and coming down Yosemite Avenue. I saw this has been man 12 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, or something like that. That's before I even understood anything about angels or their work or their ministry or anything like that. I never had tapped into any of that kind of stuff. And God showed me that way beforehand because of where we're at now. And so we need to use them. We need to cooperate Amen. with heaven. Heaven, heaven came in again this morning during worship for a short while. I heard it. That's, that's twice I've heard it in the last two Sundays. It's like God's just showing me or us or whoever else is here or whatever, or for me just to even say it so people will get in agreement with it. But it's, it's coming down. It's coming more and more. It's going to be more and more normal for heaven to be in this place during our meetings. And that's going to be something that, that, that we're not going to have to even, I mean, uh, do. Just show up, worship the Lord, fellowship with God, and let God do what he needs to do in this place. That's where we're headed. Amen? All right. Well, just share it. There is a hold it closer. There is a platform Thank you, Holy Spirit. for healing right now. Um, my sister with the eye patch, would you come? Sister Diane. Please? Sister Diane. Thank you, Lord. Please. Lord gave me a word for you. Oh. Just reach out to the Lord today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's a platform right now of healing. Thank you, Lord. She cut it up under. <clears throat> Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord told me that the enemy has come against you to try to distract you. But he said right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm impacting you. Thank you, I'm Lord. I'm impacting you. The trust and the faith that is being built in you through this. Yeah. Is to shine with the power and the glory of his presence. Mm. That this has come against you. God has made sure that, that this platform you, that is being placed on you right now, that there will never be another weapon to stand against you that will prosper. That he is releasing this upon you, that your whole family will see the glory of the Lord through what he's doing in your life right now. He's releasing this. I feel his presence right now. He's releasing this into you right now. Right now. You're being impacted right now. Just receive it. Jesus. Your faith is at a prime place. You are so fruitful in your faith right now that this is falling upon you, filling you, filling you. Filling you. What the enemy has tried to do to disgrace you and shame you, God is setting up in fame. He's making your name a name of fame. You're receiving that fame right now, like history is being written. Command to behold. In Jesus' name. Receive. 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 to behold. Receive. Thank you. Hallelujah. Take your hands off. Release it. Yeah. Now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I prove on the tree that's it. I receive your word, Lord Almighty God, you are. Yeah. You're my yes. mighty God. Yeah. You're my healer, Lord. You're my Lord yeah. and Savior, yeah. Jesus. Thank yeah. you. That's right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Tell the enemy. Tell the enemy who you are. Jesus name. That's right. Come and God. You are not my <laughs> Jesus God, name. devil. I am God <laughs> yes. God Come on. Thank you, Lord. God Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Ah, Mashike. In Jesus name. Now, this is what I saw. You just keep receiving it, but this is what I saw. I saw the hand of the devil just squeezing your face. That's why I came after that, and I saw it in the spirit in the name of Jesus. His hands off. Your face will start becoming back to normal like it's supposed to. Your eyes, everything will be whole in Jesus' name. That's it. Now, you let your tongue line up with that word that just was spoke over you. You speak it and watch it take place in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank Come you, on, Lord. Come on, somebody shout Thank in the house Lord. of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Victory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Lord, I thank you for people that have been having problems with their ears in this place. Lord, I release healing. I ask for holy anointing, healing anointing right now. Fire, warmth, healing anointing to go right now into people's ears. Lord, open ears, heal ears, touch ears right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I command ears to open, to be healed. Command, command hearing to be restored. By the name of Jesus Christ, right now, Lord, I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for results, healing results this week. I thank you that people will notice their ears are stronger, their hearing stronger. Even people that have been having pain for some reason in their ears, go in Jesus' name. I thank you that we'll see this week, Lord, we'll notice this week an opening and a hearing and a healing that's taking place. In people's ears, Lord, I ask you for it in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. On the meetings, uh, when I came here, you know, a week before it started. Hold it close. Um, Hold no, it close. A, year, um, a week before it started. Thank you. Father. I had asked. Jesus, I, w I was going back and forth, doing all kinds of stuff as usual, taking care of uh, house business and outside business and preparation for whatever I have to do on that day. And I just suddenly came to a, an abrupt stop. And I, I took a hold of that time and I said, Jesus, can, can you just sit here? Can we just talk? What? Can can I have this time right now just to well, yeah, let's just talk? And I I sat there I and okay, I said, I you tell me things. You say things to me. Yes. You let allow me to see things in your kingdom. You allow me to feel somebody's pain. You allow me to be able to speak. I said, Jesus, can you tell me what's inside me? Can you tell me what's wrong with me? Can you search my heart and just bring it up? I want to know. Can you just tell me? From the depths of my heart, I want to be free in every area. Thank you, Lord. He didn't answer me. Huh. He didn't say anything. Not at that minute. I continued. And that was in my heart. And I came to the meeting. That was, that was life changing. That was a turnaround. Because what I thought was okay was not. And the things that I was doing I thought was okay was not. And I thought, this but a repentance to me. And most of the time, if you speak up here, I'm trying to catch everything that is just, just coming, coming, coming. But at the middle of the night, I woke up. And, and, and I thought, I get it. I got it. I get it. It's kind of like it was rewinding in my mind. Hmm. It was rewinding, and I was hearing what he was saying. Heart issues. The heart issues. In order to accelerate and to climb, in order to, to reach that place where he wants us to go, in order to go and follow him, it's he has to be the center right. of everything. Right. He has right. to become God in our heart and right. in our lives in order for that water and that anointing, right. in order for life to flow to yes. others, yes. in order to give life to those that are dying, right. to those who are desperately in need, for those who are homeless, to those who are brokenhearted, who are sick. Thank you, Lord. And I said, I get it. It's not about me and what's, it's not about me and what my mind thinks. It's up to you. Thank you, Lord. 
that you bring that repentance to us yes. in order that he will be glorified through us. Yeah. In order for us to voice, in order for that anointing to climb and to go higher, in order to break what the enemy has done and what he's holding captive. I heard what the speaker said. Hmm. I was not with a place that I was supposed to be in. I repented. And that came to me in the middle of the night. I couldn't sleep because I was thinking I was wrong. I was wrong in my thoughts. I was wrong, but I'm free. And I'm able, I'm able now to understand a little more. Hmm. And that's where we're going. He wants a greater wisdom and understanding. I couldn't understand, but he brought that to me. Yeah. When the speakers came, I advise you, hear the tapes, hear, hear it. It's life changing. A corner turned in my life, a corner turned. I can't fully understand it right now, but I know in here, there's been a change. There's been a change and he wants to bring that to us. Yeah, he wants amen. it because he wants your families more than you do to That's come good. into his kingdom yes, and yes. the life changing what That's we good. have. That's good. He wants for them. That's good. More than what we want. That's good. Right. I agree, Josie. Amen. 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 Let's let's stand up for a second and get in agreement with that. That's 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 good, Josie. He wants our families more than we want our families. Man, think about that for just a second. That's good. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you're bringing restoration, Lord. That word restoration, you're bringing restoration to not only us as individuals, God, but also to our families. And you're bringing restoration to the body of Christ, Lord. Hallelujah. And Lord, I decree and declare the blessing of the Lord over every person in this place. I decree and declare, Lord, that we will, Father, grow in wisdom, we'll grow in understanding, we'll grow in knowledge of your word, Lord, and not only just to be full of your word and know your word, but Lord, to also demonstrate your word, Lord. Use us to demonstrate what the word of the Lord is saying in this hour, Lord. We want to be hooked into the right season. We want to be hooked in, excuse me, hooked into what you're doing, what you're saying, where you're going, Lord. We want to do that, Lord. And so, Lord, I thank you for the words that have been spoken today. All the thoughts in the people's hearts today as, as you've ministered to us today, Lord. I thank you that we're being set free and delivered and helped and healed in every area of our lives, Lord. Our lives belong to you, Father. We give our life to you, Father. And Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name that you give us appointments this week, God. Give us divine appointments. Give us God appointments this week, Lord, that we're able to minister and to love and to bless. Open the door for us for that, Lord. We want to do that, Lord. And I thank you that this word grows deep in our hearts today. That we are, Father God, carriers of your anointing and your power and your love and your glory, Lord. Use us. And Lord, I thank you for your blessing upon us today in Jesus' name. Amen.